Temperature not only affects how hot or cold we feel, but it changes the air pressure. That's the force of the atmosphere pushing on the Earth. Warm air weighs less than cool air and creates a low pressure area. Cool air is heavier and creates an area of high pressure. Seen from space, these clouds mark the path of a jet stream, a narrow band of fast moving air about eight miles above the Earth. Jet streams are among the most powerful forces on our planet. The polar jet stream influences weather across the northern hemisphere. Airplanes try to keep out of its path when traveling west. But they do their best to ride with the jet stream to speed their journey east. The jet stream breeds storms beneath it wherever it goes. When it curves north, the jet stream suddenly goes faster and pulls up air from the ocean surface. New air rushes in to replace rising air. And at sea level, this creates huge gusts of wind. This is the start of a region of low pressure or a surge of warm air. The jet stream is like a river. When it is strong, it flows fast and straight. But when the jet stream is weak, it meanders. This wandering course can cause cold air to sweep down from the Arctic and ridges of warm air to move up from the tropics. The jet stream can create hot weather in Moscow, freezing temperatures in Rome, and warm weather again as far north as Iceland. The jet stream can also create a blocking area of high pressure, a flow of cold air. Wind is the movement of air from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. The rotation of the earth prevents winds from the poles and the equator from blowing directly north or south. Instead, the winds that blow toward the equator curve west. And the winds that blow away from the equator move toward the east. This is called the Coriolis effect. And these winds are called trade winds. Trade winds complete the two giant loops of air that circle the Earth. These enormous loops of air are called Hadley cells for George Hadley, an 18th century British lawyer who first tried to describe them. A cell is a mass of air that moves together in a circular motion. The North and South Poles each have a cell of their own. Cold air sinks at the poles and then flows north or south where it warms and rises again to complete what is called a polar cell. In the middle of each hemisphere, squeezed between the tropical heat of the Hadley cells and the chilling cold of the polar cells, is the temperate zone. If you look closely, you can see a battle going on in the temperate zone, a clash between warm and cool air. This clash is known as a front. The name has its roots in World War I, when weather information became a classified secret the neutral Norwegians formed their own forecasting service and set up a string of weather stations along the Norwegian coast. They soon discovered that the warm air blowing over the country from the North Atlantic was a single mass that arrived all at once, like a huge army marching forward. They called the line where this warm air arrived a front, because it resembled the battle fronts of the war in Europe. Today's meteorologists, including those on TV, still plot these military-looking fronts on their weather maps. 
They are an essential tool in predicting where it will rain. 